In this lesson, we're going to learn how to calculate molar mass for a chemical compound by looking at its formula. Now, your teacher or textbook might use one of these other names instead of molar mass. But the good thing is, these are all pretty much just different names for the same thing. So what we're going to learn here is going to work no matter which of these things you're talking about. So we'll do a bunch of practice problems, start out with some relatively straightforward examples, you can really get a hang of it, and then we'll look at some ones that are a little bit more challenging as we move on. So by the end of this, you're going to be a total pro at calculating molar mass. Here's our first example, SO2. So to calculate the molar mass for this compound, we need to figure out how many of each type of atom there are in the chemical formula. Okay, so we have an S without anything after it. So that means that we have one sulfur atom, right? When you have a chemical symbol without anything after it, it means you have just one of them. Then we have O2, which means that we have two oxygen atoms here. So one sulfur atom, two oxygen atoms in this formula. Now, we need to figure out how much sulfur atoms and how much oxygen atoms weigh. And we can do that from the periodic table. So we look up sulfur and oxygen on the periodic table, and this is what we find. And these numbers here are how much these various atoms weigh. So now we add these together, keeping in mind how many of each atom we have. So we have one sulfur atom, so I'll do one times how much sulfur weighs, which is 32.07 plus two, because I have two oxygens, two times how much oxygen weighs, which is 16.00. Now, you don't really have to do the one here because I only have one sulfur, but I just like to do it because I think it sort of makes things, makes things more consistent and a little easier. So, one times the weight of sulfur times two time, plus two times the weight of oxygen gives us 64.07. And the units here are grams per mole. Now, what this means is that one mole of SO2 weighs 64.07 grams. That's what this grams per mole means. So, how much does a mole of SO2 weigh? 64.07 grams. Let's keep going. Okay, C3H8O. As before, we look at the chemical formula to figure out how many of each type of atom we have here. So C3 means we got three carbon atoms. H8 means we got eight hydrogen atoms. And O without anything after it means that we just have one oxygen atom. Now, we look up each of these atoms on the periodic table to find out how much they weigh. Carbon is 12.01, hydrogen is 1.01, .01, and oxygen is 16.00. Now, we add up the weights of these atoms, keeping in mind how many of each atoms we have. So we have three carbon atoms, so we're going to do three times how much carbon weighs, 12.01, plus eight, because we have eight hydrogen atoms, times 1.01, which is how much hydrogen weighs, plus one, because we only got one oxygen atom, 1 times 16.00, multiply these and add them together, and we get 60.11. Don't forget the units, grams per mole. And once again, this grams per mole here means that one mole of C3H8O weighs 60.11 grams. This is the amount of grams that a mole of this weighs. Now let's keep going and look at some examples that are a little bit more complex because they have parentheses in them, which can get a little bit tricky. Okay, Ca, and then we have parentheses, NO3, 2. So let's use this formula to figure out how many of each type of atom we have. The first thing we have is Ca without anything after it. So that means that we have one calcium atom. Now we have NO3, but it's in parentheses and there's a two after that. So what that means is that we have two NO3s. Here they are, NO3, NO3. Now, 
Each of these NO3s has one nitrogen and three oxygens. But since we have two of them, we end up getting two nitrogens total and six oxygens total. One, two, three, one, two, three. Okay? So that means that total in our formula here, we have one calcium atom and then two nitrogen atoms and six total oxygen atoms because this NO3 here is in parentheses and we have two of them. Now we just do the same thing we've done before. We know how many atoms of each type we have, so we look each atom up on the periodic table and find out how much it weighs. Now we go through the calculations like we've done before. One calcium, so we do one times 40.08, plus we've got two nitrogen, so we do two times 14.01, plus six times 16.00, because we have six oxygens, and we end up with 164.10 grams per mole. And I know this might sound repetitive, but it's really important to keep in mind what this number means. And it means that one mole of CaNO32 weighs 164.10 grams. That's how much a mole of this weighs. Let's do one more example with these parentheses just so we can get the hang of how we do the multiplication here. Okay, parentheses NH4 3 PO4. So how many of each type of atom do we have? Well this part of the formula tells us that we have three NH4s. So here they are one, two, three. Now, how many total nitrogens and hydrogens do we have? Well, each NH4 has one nitrogen and four hydrogens, okay? But we have three of these NH4s. That's what this three is telling us here. So that means that total, since we have three of these, we have, in total, three nitrogen atoms and 12 hydrogen atoms. Okay? So that's what we get from this part because we have three of the NH4s. Now let's keep going with the formula. We got a P with nothing after it, which means that we have one phosphorus atom, and then we have an O with four after it, so that means we have four oxygen atoms. Okay? I'm just going to get rid of this math stuff up here so that it can be a little bit clearer. Okay, and now we know how many of each type of atom we have. So we just pull these up on the periodic table. Nitrogen, hydrogen, phosphorus, and oxygen. And we do the math here. And we do 3 times nitrogen, 14.01, plus 12 times how much hydrogen weighs, 1.01, plus 1, because we only got one phosphorus, times how much phosphorus weighs, 30.97, plus 4 times 16.00, which is how much oxygen weighs. And we end up with 149.12. What are the units? Grams per mole. Which, once again, means that one mole of NH43PO4 weighs 149.12 grams. This is how much a mole of this weighs. Let's do one more formula for something that's a little bit tricky. We don't see it a lot, but it can be very confusing. MgSO4, and then we have this dot, and 7H2O. This is a formula for a compound called a hydrate which means that we have an MgSO4, and then we have seven water molecules, H2O molecules. We've got seven of these kind of just hanging out with this MgSO4. So let's see how we're going to calculate the molar mass of this whole hydrate. Okay, we're just going to read through the formula like we have before, figuring out how many atoms of each type we have. So we've got an Mg with nothing after it, and that means that we have one magnesium atom, we got a sulfur, 
an S without anything after it, meaning that we got one sulfur atom, and then we got an O with a four after it, meaning that we have four oxygen atoms. Okay, now with this seven H2O, notice that we're not using parentheses here. Okay, no parentheses here, but it's still kind of the same idea. We don't use parentheses because of the, because of the hydrate, because we got this, this uh, dot here. But the seven H2O means that there are seven H2Os, just like if we had parentheses. Okay, so we got seven H2Os here. Here they are, one, two, three, four, five, six, ah, seven. Seven H2Os, and each H2O has two hydrogens and one oxygen. But we got seven of them, seven H2Os here. So that means that in total, because we have seven of these, we end up getting 14 hydrogen atoms, because there are two for each and there's seven. And then there's one oxygen in each of the uh, H2O. So we have seven oxygens total. So that's how we deal with the seven H2O part of things. Again, let me just clean up some of this math here so we can just be left with the atoms that we have in the formula. Okay, so now we have our atoms here. We got magnesium, we got sulfur, we got oxygen, we got hydrogen, and we got oxygen. Now, if you're observant, you might realize we got oxygen in two places. So instead of doing it separately, I could add these up and say I have 11 oxygens total. Why am I doing it separately? I don't really know. Maybe it's just because I think it's a little bit clearer, but you can do whatever you like. Still, I'm gonna do the oxygen separately because I just have it laid out like this. Anyway, the math for this is gonna be one times how much magnesium weighs, 24.31, because I got one magnesium, plus one times how much sulfur weighs, plus I got four oxygens right here, so four times 16.00, plus I got 14 hydrogens, 14 times 1.01, .01. and finally we got these other oxygens that are in the hydrate part, or in the water part of this, so we got seven times 16.00, Zero, zero. And again, you could do the uh, four plus seven, you could do the oxygens all together and do 16 times 11. But anyway, we do this math, multiplication, addition, add it all up, and we get uh, 246.46. What are the units? Grams per mole. Meaning, once again, that one mole of MgSO4 7H2O weighs 246.46 grams. This, the molar mass, is how much a mole of this weighs. So now, no matter what kind of chemical formula you get, if it's got parentheses, if, it got, if, it, if it's got a dot, if it's a hydrate, you're gonna be totally set. You should know exactly how to calculate molar mass.